everybody. Um, this is a lecture on the derivation of the Madelung constant for physics 2020. Um, Erwin Madelung originally came up with this idea. Here he's pictured shown here on the left right after he got his PhD and here he is on the right um, when he retired. He lived between 1881 and 1972 and he developed and first derived this idea of the Madelung constant which is often used in material science. Now this constant um, which is different for different crystals characterizes the net electrostatic effects from all ions in a crystalline lattice. And we're going to derive this constant by determining the potential energy for one ion in a lattice. Now, the Madelung constant is different for different crystals, but we're going to go with the simplest possible example um, here, which is sodium chloride. Now, sodium chloride is nice because the charge on a sodium ion is plus E, and the charge on a chlorine ion is minus E. Of course, E here is the 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, which is the fundamental charge that you'll find on a proton or an electron in magnitude. Okay, so in this little sketch here of a portion of a sodium chloride um, lattice, the sodium ions, which are positively charged, are pictured in gray, and the chlorine ions are pictured in green. Now what we're going to do is find the potential energy from this sodium ion here at the center of this picture due to all the other ions in the lattice, okay? So what you're going to do is, uh, this is just a chunk, but you're going to imagine in your mind an infinite crystal that keeps stretching on in this perfect repeating pattern in all three dimensions. So we're going to treat all the ions in this crystal as point charges, which means, of course, that they would be uh, infinitely small and just situated at the locations shown here in the diagram. Now, we're going to call the distance between nearest neighbor ions A, which would mean that for this picture, we have pictured a cube that has a side length 2A here, okay? Now, let's remember that our formula for the potential energy for a pair of point charges is given by K, Q1, Q2 over R. And of course, we call the potential energy U. K here is the Coulomb constant, which is all can also be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, the value of K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th in SI units. Q1 and Q2 are the magnitude in Coulombs of the charges of each one in the pair. And R is the distance in between uh, the two charges. Now, of course, we're going to sum over the whole lattice, so we're going to get an infinite number of pairs. And so um, the potential energy at a point is going to be the sum over all possible potential energies for all pairs in the lattice. So we're going to be summing over all these potential energies. So what we're going to do, our strategy, is that we're going to start with the ions that are nearest neighbors to that sodium ion there in the center. We're going to figure out the potential energy for a pair of those ions, and then we're going to multiply by the number of nearest neighbors, okay? Hopefully this will make sense as um, I continue on talking. So here I'm going to call this potential energy U1. Like I said, we're going to be doing an infinite sum here. Now the distance in between these ions uh, is going to be A for those nearest neighbors. The ions in question are labeled with red arrows here in this drawing, okay? Now, there are um, six ions that are a distance A from this sodium ion here in the center. I've labeled them here. Okay, so let's just look at this one right here in the center of this face, okay? Then this chlorine ion right here is a distance A from that sodium ion. And you can see that there's six of them Here's one, there's one, there's one, that are all that same distance. Now the charges on these nearest neighbor ions, one of them has a charge plus E, and one of them has a charge minus E, okay? So the total potential energy for all those six nearest neighbors would be 6 times K times minus E times E over A. So when you uh, finish this simple little calculation, you end up with minus 6 Ke squared over A for all the nearest neighbor ions there, okay? Hopefully that's clear. If not, remember you can always pause the video. Now, the next closest ions are going to be the 12 sodium ions that are closest to the sodium ion in the center of our cube. So I've indicated those here with red arrows, okay? There's 12 of them, right? 
Now, all of these next nearest neighbors are a distance root 2a away. You can see that pretty straightforwardly by looking at the pair of the sodium ion in the center and this one over here on the left center front of our cube. So you can see here that a square is formed with these um, sodium ions on the diagonal away from each other, right, at the corners of this little square. Now the square has side length a, so that means that the diagonal of that square would have a, a length root 2 times a. Because of the Pythagorean theorem, this forms a right triangle, and the square root of a, a squared plus a squared is... Um, they are 2a squared, and then when you take the square root, you get root 2a. So, this, so these sodium ions are distance root 2a apart, okay? Now, even though I just explained it for that one pair, all of these ions indicated in question are the same distance, and if you stare hard enough, you can see all of the little squares that I'm talking about. So, if you need to, pause the video. But there's 12 of these, and so the total potential energy for all the ions that are that distance root 2a apart would be the number of pairs, which is 12, divided by root 2 times ke squared over a, okay? And of course, they're like charges, so there's no minus sign this time. All right, the next nearest neighbors are the eight chlorine ions indicated yet again by red arrows that are a distance root 3a away from that center sodium ion, okay? Now it's root three. If you think of this sodium ion as being at the origin of a three-dimensional coordinate system, then there would be a vector, for example, that points from the sodium ion in the center to this chlorine ion, which is um, kind of on the top left front of our cube, okay? Now, the um, let's just picture the unit vectors for each of the components there. We would have A in the I hat, plus um, A in the J hat, plus minus A in the K hat, for example, if you did the X, Y, Z. And then if you do the square root of the sum of the squares of each one of those components, you'd get the square root of A squared plus A squared plus minus A squared, which is, of course, um, A squared again. And so if you find the magnitude of that vector, which points from the center of our cube to here, then you would get root 3A. Now, another way to look at it, if you don't like that explanation, is to make another right triangle. And the right triangle would go from the top of this chlorine ion here down to this sodium ion, which is, of course, on the diagonal from the sodium ion in the center. And this is root 2 on the base of root 2a on the base of that triangle. This is a, which would make the hypotenuse, of course, root 3a. Okay, so that's another way to look at it. Now there's eight of these ions because there's eight corners to our cube, okay? So that makes the total potential energy U3 um, for the ions at this distance from the sodium to be eight minus eight Ke squared over root three A. Now, of course, the minus sign comes because these are oppositely charged. So it's plus E times minus E, okay? Sorry, I realize there's a typo right here. Let me fix it. Oh, wait. Oh, well. I'll just get back to that later. Okay, now, the next closest ions would be the six sodium ions at the center of the next cube over. Now, that's not pictured. It would get messy if I kept trying to do that, but I'm sure you can visualize it in your mind. Just visualize another cube right next to this cube, maybe to the right of it, okay? And then the center of that cube would be a sodium ion, which would just be two steps over, 2a over from that sodium ion there in the center, okay? So the distance in between center to center of neighboring cubes is 2a, in other words, which is the length of one cube side. Now, since there's six faces to a cube, you can imagine that this cube uh, would have six other cubes surrounding it, right, in all directions. And so the total potential energy um, for those next nearest neighbors would be 6ke squared over 2a. And of course, it's a positive term this time because it's like charges, a sodium ion and a sodium ion. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about, but I would have to go on infinitely long to keep going, okay? So I'm not going to do that. So the potential energy for an infinite um, lattice here for our sodium ion at the center would be an infinite sum, okay? 
Now, this isn't a bad approximation um, to, to consider an infinite sum, because if you think about it, the um, uh, spacing in between these neighboring atoms is going to be the, a fraction of a nanometer, right? It's teeny weeny. And, you know, most table salt that you, you can even see it uh, with your eye, the, the grains of salt in your hand, if you sprinkled some in your hand. So it's visible, right? And so if you think about that uh, size of even a small salt crystal, picturing it as infinite in comparison to the spacing in between nearest neighbors is not a bad approximation, okay? So if you look at what our total potential energy would be, it's this infinite sum. If I pull the Ke squared over A outside of that and just look at the uh, things that multiply the Ke squared over A, then the total potential energy would be minus 6 plus 12 over root 2 minus 8 over root 3 plus 6 over 2. And then the next term, which I didn't talk about, would be minus 24 over root 5 and then so on and so forth. And then that would all multiply Ke squared over A. So it might not seem like it, but this series does converge. However, I will tell you that the calculation, the derivation to prove that is non-trivial. And so I'm not going to show that here. It would take a lot more time than we really have. Okay. So um, if you're interested in that, you can Google it. And there's um, several papers out there that discuss this derivation um, for the convergence of this infinite series. But I will tell you that the value for a sodium chloride crystal for the Madelon constant is minus 1.74756, okay? Now, this constant would be different for other types of crystals. And the, diff and the reason for this, of course, is that not all crystals have the same stoichiometry as sodium chloride. Um, so, for example, magnesium chloride has a different stoichiometry, and you have two chlorine ions for every magnesium, so on and so forth, okay? Now, this different stoichiometry is, of course, going to change the crystalline structure. And if you change the crystalline structure, then, of course, that would change the value of the Madelon constant, okay? So we picked the simplest possible one to show here, but please understand that there's tables and tables of these things in material science for different crystals that um, you can look up. Okay. Now your textbook Purcell and Morin, it also does a derivation very similar to this, but the equation that they get is slightly different. Now the reason that they get a slightly different equation is because they're not just calculating the potential energy for one ion, okay? They're trying to calculate the potential energy for the entire lattice of ions, which is of course going to be a much different number. So what they show in the text is this equation here, that the total potential energy is minus 0 0.8378 times nke squared over a, okay? Now here, n would be the uh, total number of ions here in the lattice, so you can see that that's different. And if you think about it, um, this uh, ion, right, the total number of ions is twice the number of sodium chloride molecules, right? So if you take that factor of 2 that comes from uh, thinking of it as uh, ions versus, you know, a molecule, and take that factor of 2 and multiply it times your 0.8378, then you see that their result is pretty close for that constant to our value for m, okay? So, all right. Um, I hope that that shows you that uh, some of the stuff that we're learning here in um, electricity and magnetism at this point, while pretty basic, does have applications that get used um, in uh, material science and beyond. And um, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in class.